setting up the DJI Phantom 4 Advanced Drone. Let's do it. So let's open the case and take a look at what we have. This is the DJI Phantom 4 Advanced. I'm going to pull out the remote controller. We have a remote controller. You will take this, flip this up, press the release on the side right here, and that will expand and give you enough room to attach your phone or tablet, whichever you prefer. We're going to open the antennas and get those out and ready to go. And we, you, you'll see that we have this switch taped to P, and that should always stay on P for the safest flying mode. Talking about the remote controller, we have the power button here. We have the home button here. Pressing this button will bring the unit back to the home position, but please do not use that except in the event of an emergency. On the back side, we have some more dials and buttons. This button, press the click, and then you can dial, and that changes the settings of the camera that lighten and darkens the picture on the camera. This button, this clear silver button here, this will take a photo when you snap that during flight. It takes a photo. The button next to it is a pause button, and this will pause any activity that's currently going on, such as advanced flying modes as follow me and things like that. This will pause uh, that activity. It should not be necessary to use that button very often at all. On the left-hand side of the controller, we have another dial. This dial tilts the gimbal on the camera. It tilts the camera up or down to a certain extent. This button with the red dot is your record start button and record stop button, like on any other device. You press it to start recording and then press it again to stop the recording. Outside of that, uh, we should be good to go with the remote controller. There is a charging port on the side here that you can put the cable into and charge it if you'd like. And on the back, um, bottom side is the USB port that you would plug your phone into, uh, the large USB port. The smaller USB port is for firmware updating the controller, so that should not be used during flight. And that's it for the remote controller. So we'll, let's set this aside. It's ready to go. Let's pull out the unit at the drone itself. So this is the Phantom 4 Advanced, and it comes with some protective measures. During transport, it comes with a plastic cover on the camera, so we're going to remove that. Let's take that off. And then on the back side of the gimbal, it comes with a foam piece with a red sticker on it, and we need to get that off too. That protects the bounce of the gimbal during transport. And we'll set those pieces aside. So now the camera is ready to go. The next thing we want to do is get out the ND filters. This is a set of ND filters. It has three different levels of darkness. There's an ND4, an ND8, and an ND16. The 4 is the lightest, 16 is the darkest, 8 somewhere in between. And we, we will have to put one of these on the camera of the drone in order to get uh, the best quality video uh, on uh, any given day. Unless you're flying really late at night where it's dim, um, you're, you're going to need one of these. On a very, very, very sunny day, bright day, you definitely want to go with the ND16. On a moderately sunny, cloudy day, the 8. And on a really, really overcast day, we would use the ND4. So for this purpose, we'll go ahead and put the 16 on right now because it's a very sunny day outside. So we're going to, we have the 16 ND filter here. We're going to take the unit and we're going to cradle it uh, like so. And we're going to very lightly Take this clear protective cover that's on there off. Just, it just screws off very easily. This is super fine threaded. So be very, very careful because it can be easily cross threaded. So we'll go ahead and put the ND filter on. And again, just kind of taking our time, feeling it and getting those threads in there and putting it on, no problem. And this will have to be reversed and taken back off in order to pack it properly too. So we'll go ahead and put the unit down on the table. The next thing we're going to do is put the propellers on the unit. We're going to, we got four propellers. Here there should be two propellers with black rings right here on top. And then we're going to have two propellers with silver rings, same position. 
Now what we're going to do to attach these propellers is very, very simple. The black rings will be attached to the area on the drone where there's three little black dots on these three white posts. The black dots get the black ring propeller. So we'll go ahead and put this on. And to put the propellers on, you simply seat it on and then you just give it a nice press and twist. It's a twist lock and it's going to twist in the direction of the flight to put them on and it twists in the reverse to take them off. So we're going to push it down and then twist toward the lower side because that's our flight direction. The silver ones, will, those will go on the other, the opposing two, which do not have black dots, and they go on in the opposite direction. So we'll push down and twist. There's also little indications on the uh, propellers themselves. They're kind of hard to see, but they're there. That shows you the lock and unlock directions too, if you find that difficult to remember. But we'll go ahead and take this silver one, put it on, press lightly, twist, and they're locked, and just make, you know, pull on them, make sure they are secured and ready to go. And now, a couple more things. We're going to set that aside. As far as what else is in the box, we have, in this case, an extra set of blades. In the event you do catch something and break one, or it gets really worn out, we have a full extra set of blades to replace. There's two silver, two black in there. We have the cable for the power adapter, and then we have the power adapter unit itself. So you plug this cable into the power adapter like that, this end obviously into the wall, and then on the other end of the power adapter, we have a two-headed ends. The, this end, the big wide one, goes in, charges the battery, and the small uh, cylindrical end is what we charge the control unit with. So to charge the battery, which, and by the way, there is an extra battery in here, and if you press the battery like I did, if you press it once, it will show me that all four bars are lighting up and that means this is a fully charged battery ready to go. To charge it though, you would take this and plug it into the battery. Simply plug it into the wall, the light will come on and they will start blinking. And when they're fully, when it's fully charged, the lights will just go off and it will, there will no longer be any lights on and you know it's done. So we'll put the battery back in here. The other two pieces that are in the box, there is a small pigtail adapter. This is for only for updating the firmware on the drone itself, so we don't need that for any reason for flying. And then th there is a micro USB cable, a standard micro USB cable for Android phones. If you have an iPhone, you will need your iPhone cable that came with the phone or a similar iPhone cable in order to use the drone because it will be connected by cable. So that's everything that's in the box. There are some instruction manuals and such in there, but that's, that's pretty much it. So let's get this thing set up and ready to go. Okay, we have the drone out of the box and put together, and now we have the remote here, and we're going to go ahead and put the our phone on the remote. So here we have my phone, which is an iPhone. You're going to have to download the DJI Go 4 app for your phone. I already have that downloaded on my iPhone here. We'll set that aside for a second. First thing we want to do is take our phone cable, the normal USB plug, we're going to plug that into the big USB slot here. Remember, the small USB slot was only for charging uh, the unit, or not charging the unit, but the firmware update of the unit, rather. I'm going to take the cable, plug the other end into our phone. And again, iPhone is an iPhone cable. The cable in the box with the drone is an Android cable only. So if you have an iPhone, you're going to have to throw one in the box or make sure you have it with you. And I put it in, clamped it down. Make sure it's nice and snug where the phone's not going to fall out when you're trying to fly it. The remote controller is just like the batteries. So if you want to check the status, here are the LEDs. You press the light and the four lights light up. That tells me my remote control is fully charged, which is good for a good five or six hours of flight. The batteries only run for about 20 minutes at a time before they're exhausted. So you get about 20 minutes of flying time and then you're going to have to land and it'll give you warnings on all that in the app. You know, how much power it has left, how high it is and all those things will be noted in the app when you're ready to or when you have it in the air. So to turn the remote controller on you're going to press until the lights blink and then press and hold and you, you'll hear that little beep that you may have just heard right there. The controller is now on and ready to go. Now we're going to go into the phone we're going to open the DJI Go 4 app. 
I'll tilt my phone back so you can see it a little bit better. Touch the app. We're going to enter the device. And now we're ready to go. However, the air capture is not turned on, so the message I'm getting right now is that the aircraft is disconnected and that it will need to get it connected. Okay, now we have the aircraft here and we're going to turn it on. The on off is on the battery side. The button's on the battery, so we're going to press. The four lights come on, then we're going to press and hold. And you can hear the drone come on. You can hear it's a little song and dance. The blades go. The drone is on and functional. And at, at this time, you can see that the app went ahead and connected to the drone. It'll go into a screen that and, and probably walk you through some instructions on when it's safe to fly and when, and when not. We're going to close that screen. Now we're into the app. We have another safety notification that makes sure that we, we're going to be safe with this thing. If you're in a park uh, near where a lot of people are, you know, the app can detect by GPS coordinates where you are. And a lot of this stuff is now flagged. So it knows if you're at a park where there could be a lot of people and it's going to warn you that to be careful around those people. So we go ahead and say, yeah, we're aware of that. You'll do that by put, check, hitting the check box and then hitting yes. The box will go away. And we have a notification, yes, the box to go away. So now the box is gone. The unit is on and ready to go. And you can see on the app, it says it's green at the top and says ready to go GPS. That tells us that we have good GPS signal and it will be able to position itself and keep track of itself through GPS. And now we're ready to go fly. All right, let's take a few minutes to go over the DJI Go 4 app and how to change some of the settings within the camera. So once you get the drone connected and ready to go, you'll get the screen that I've got right now. And you can see it says ready to go in vision in yellow. It has no GPS because I'm actually in my house recording this. As you can see, the drone's camera, the dark background of my home. Anyway, let's talk about how to change the camera settings. So on the right hand side of the screen, right below the red record button, there's three little lines with little circles on them. So we're going to tap that and it's going to bring us to the various different camera settings. Right now the camera is set to manual. First we have auto, which is total full auto that's going to do everything for you. I don't really recommend that you use the setting because it's not going to really give us the best quality video that we could want. Second is A, is aperture priority. It's going to be driven by the aperture. We don't really want that one either. S for shutter speed, priority. So that's going to be driven by the shutter speed and set everything else for us automatically. This is the mode that we want to go with for the most part. If you're really adventurous, you can try full manual where you just control everything. But for the most simplistic purpose, we'll go with S for shutter speed, priority. Couple things here. If we're shooting in 4K 60 mode, we want our shutter speed to be double what our frames per second are. So 4K 60 is 60 frames per second. So double that is 120. So we, we're going to want it to shoot at 120 frames per second. So we're going to dial it over to 120, just like I, like I just did. Every, everything else can remain on auto. What this is going to do is it's going to make sure that our shutter speed is always 1 1 of a second, which will give us the best possible video quality for a 60 frame per second video recording. If we're doing slow motion video, say at 120 frames per second, then we're going to double that. We're going to go to 240. We're going to dial it over to 240 if that would be the case. So we, you know, we need you to pick what video setting you're, you're on first, and then you can come in, set this to S, set that to the shutter speed to double your frames per second and you're good to go. We'll tap the three little lines with the circles one more time and it's going to take us back to the screen and you can all see all of the information at the top. You can see it right in the middle at the top in really small font. Uh, you may have to throw the bifocals on to check, the, check it out but anyway it's there. Shutter is 1 2 40th. Uh, f-stop is 2.8 and then it's fluctuating on the ISO because it's changing the f-stop, the f and the 
ISO automatically for us to make sure that shutter speed always stays at 1 240th of a second. And then the white balance is on auto, EV plus 0.00, that's just an exposure adjustment you can do on the, uh, no pun intended, but on the fly if you want. For the most intent and purposes, that should just stay at 0.00, .00. and you can see that we are in the 4K 30 mode right now. So let's go ahead and change our mode on our video. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the same button again. We're gonna come up to the top and hit the camera in the middle. You, there's three icons at the top of this little screen. There's a, a little round uh, icon with slashes, and that's your, that's your settings for your camera itself. And then there's the picture of the camera, which is the settings for the video quality. Right now we're at 4K 30, so we're gonna tap this top one, and we're gonna just change this to 60 FPS by tapping on 60 FPS. And now we're good to go. We're gonna go back over to the shutter speed. We're gonna dial this back to 1 1 20th because we changed it, and then we're gonna hit our three bars. Now we're back, and you, if you look at the top, we were at 4K 60, and shutter's 1 1 20th, so now we're ready to go and shoot some pretty awesome 4K video. Next, we're ready to do some slow motion. So let's go ahead and change our settings for slow motion. We're gonna tap on the three lines with circles again, and we're gonna go ahead and change the camera. We're gonna click on the camera, and let's change that first so we know what our frames per second is gonna be. We are going to go down to 1080p. We're gonna click on that, 1920 by 1080, 1080p. And we can go all the way to 120, and it even says underneath it slow, so we're gonna go ahead and tap on that. We're gonna tap the three bars again. Now we're back, and we are 1AP at 1/120th. So let's go back in and again and do the shutter speed. You, we could have done this all at the same time, but I just want to see you to see me going in and out of this and changing it. So we're gonna dial our shutter over to 1/240th and go ahead and set that back. Now we're ready for some awesome slow motion, 1080p slash 120 at 1/240th of the shutter speed. Again, it's just important to remember that the slash 120 is doubled un under the shutter. So 1080p slash 120, shutter should be 1 slash 240. Double that to get the best quality video, especially with subjects that involve movement. So that's my little tutorial on how to set the app up to do either 4K 60 video or 1080p 120 slow motion video. The same rules would apply with any other video setting. If you're doing 1080p at 30, then you're gonna want your shutter to be 1 60th, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going 4K at 24 frames per second, then you would need your shutter to be set at 1 48th of a second, which should be a setting in the DJI app as well. Thanks for listening to this little tutorial. And again, have fun making some awesome quality video with the DJI Phantom 4 Advanced. Okay, now that we have everything powered on, I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off. So that's gonna work in reverse of the way we turned it on. So we're gonna take on the unit, you're gonna do the same thing again. You're gonna press the battery button and then press and hold again. All the lights will go out and it just powered off. Everything quit flashing, the lights are off. On the phone, we're gonna disconnect or hit in the app, just close the app. Then you're gonna reach around behind, press the button to release, pull your phone out, unplug the cable, the phone down, Put that back in place, unplug the cable from the back of the controller, and do the same thing for the controller. You're gonna press and hold. It'll make the beeps again, all the lights will go out. Power is now off on the controller unit. Let's take a minute just to talk real quickly about the buttons and what they're gonna do. Try to get it where you can see it here. We have two levers. We have the left lever, which is this one, and the right lever, which is this one. The left lever, controls the spin and the height of the unit. If you press it up, the unit will go up. If you press it down, the unit will come down. The side to side action, if you press it one way, it turns clockwise, and you press it the other way, it turns counterclockwise on its axis. It will not go anywhere, it'll just spin on its axis. The right, control button controls full movement of the drone, forward, backward, right, and left. So it's just as you would think, the right is forward, up is forward, backwards is down, left is left, and right is right. However, 
it is very, very important to keep in mind that that is all in re relativeness, or that is all relative to the camera position on the drone. So the camera, the side of the drone here with the camera on it, that is the front of the drone. So when you push the lever up, it will go in the direction of the camera side. If you pull the lever back, it will go backwards in the direction of the side that the battery's on. The battery side is the rear, the camera side is the front. And then the right and lefts are respective to that. So then right and then left are respective. Keep in mind, if you spin the drone on its axis and get it turned around where the camera, say, is facing you and not away from you, then everything is going to be reversed, okay? So if the drone is facing you and you push up on it, it's going to come toward you. And you pull down on it, it's going to go away from you. Otherwise, if the drone is facing opposite you, pushing up will go away from you and pushing down will come toward you. Again, it's the controller function does not change, but the orientation of the drone will change how you have to think about which direction that you have to go. And again, if the camera is facing 90 degrees sideways, like directly to your right, if you want it to go right, then you're actually going to push up, all relative to you. So just keep in mind, it's very critical to remember that the function of the right is all relative to the way the camera is facing. So it might be a good idea to always orientate yourself so the camera is facing away from you to make it more natural to control the drone. All right, one final note on the bottom of the controller, there are two buttons, a C1 and C2. Those are just custom buttons that can be programmed to do certain other things, but we're not going to worry about that at this point in time, so don't worry about those. Let's take a minute to talk about getting the drone in the air and getting it to land. So to get the drone in the air, uh, the takeoff of the drone, what you're going to do is pull the two controllers simultaneously to either diagonal towards you. So you're either going to pull them like this out towards you, or you can pull them both in towards you. Either way, hold that for a couple of seconds. The propellers will then fire up and start to take off and then the drone will be ready to go. At that point in time, the drone will not go in the air, but the propellers will be going and you'll be ready to get in the air. To get the drone to go, then you would simply push the left arrow up, because that's the direction you want to go, and it's going to go up and start to lift and take off. Once your flying is done and you're ready to land and you get it back into a position to land, you're going to pull the left controller down. The drone will start to descend and just keep pulling it down all the way and the drone will get to the ground and you're gonna pull it down and then it will sit nice and softly down on the ground, hold it for another second or two and the propellers will quit running and now you have safely landed the drone and shut the propellers off and you're ready to power everything off and pack it up. So now that we've got our drone all set up and ready to go and connected, we're ready to get into the air. But before we do that, let's talk about a few things that you should keep in mind before flying the DJI Phantom 4 Pro Advanced. First thing, 400 feet is your limit. DJI's limit is 400 feet. So it's going to stop you at that point in time. So you need to keep it at 400 feet. Secondly, watch out for power lines, trees, and all those kind of things that can unexpectedly show up. The Phantom 4 Advance does have forward sensing. It will stop forward. It will stop going down, left, right, back. It does not have such things. So if you're going left or right or backwards, it is very possible that you could run into something if you're not paying very close attention. Always, always make sure the drone is in your visual line of sight. Secondly, do not fly the drone directly over people. That is against the FAA regulations. Thirdly, it should not be flown near airports. It is possible that the DJI app will prohibit flight in certain areas where there's a lot of interference or where it can detect that it's within uh, very close proximity of an airport, the app will not allow you to take off. So just keep those things in mind to have a safe and enjoyable flight with the DJI Phantom 4 Advance. Thank you.